Hola, girls! Total Overdose is what would happen if you had a combination of Max Payne and Grand Theft Auto, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Spicy move! It's one of the most 2005 games ever made, featuring that utterly horrible early to mid 2000s aesthetic, where every male protagonist had spiked hair and a soul patch. They all looked like Dane Cook and were somehow even less funny. It's also one of those games that I've had people suggest I take a look at for a while now. And considering it's only seven bucks on goodoldgames.com and how slow the year's been so far for new games, seriously, it's been such a slow year. I thought I'd take a look at this thing and see what it's all about. And after finishing it, well, I've certainly got a lot of words to describe it, some of them four letter words, which aren't very nice. But I think my biggest takeaway is that it might be one of the most balls to the wall shooters I've ever played, and that's really saying something. Within literally the first 15 minutes of the game, you're gonna play as two separate characters, Ernesto Cruz, his son Tommy, and then after that and for the rest of the game, you'll play as his other son, Ramiro. Are you ready for some action? Sure, I thought you'd never ask. In the prologue sequence, Ernesto's thrown out of a plane and then his murder's covered up by the DEA as an overdose. Yeah, he overdosed all right, overdosed on gravity. Tommy's now a DEA agent investigating his dad's death and it doesn't take no Benedict Cumberbatch to tell that something's not adding up. Now listen, Cruz, your father's death came as a shock to all of us. But after being wounded in an explosion, Tommy's injured and then confined to a wheelchair and then has to send his identical twin brother Ramiro to Mexico in his absence. Yeah, that's convenient, isn't it? Ramiro then teams up with an undercover police officer and tries to cripple the Mexican underworld from the inside. And more than that, I couldn't tell you, simply because I couldn't really follow it. I don't know why I'm telling you this. A lot of this is seen from Tommy's perspective, who's regaling the whole thing to a DEA agent. But then it also cuts back to what Ramiro's doing at the same time that Tom is explaining it or something. I don't know, maybe they're going for that whole Pulp Fiction thing where they just kind of jump around in everybody's timelines. The white cracks me head. It all has something to do with gun smuggling, which is all linked up to the truth behind their dad's death. But really all the cinematics did was just interrupt me. In between those moments when I could shoot someone in the face with a sawn off shotgun or an SFG. I'm playing this game to kick bubblegum and chew ass, not listen to people talk. It's not even got that novelty of using well-known actors for all of these roles either. You know how sometimes you play one of these older games and you hear a voice that instantly sounds recognisable? Like hearing Mark Hamill doing the narration in an old Call of Duty game or something? Or Mickey Rock telling you to suck his big old hairy balls? Send me the bill, cocksuckers. The only thing really worth noting here for any of these voice actors is that I thought that one of the guy's IMDB profile photo made him look like Kenny Powers from Eastbound and Down. Pardon me? Right, so we've got a boring, forgettable story delivered by a pretty unremarkable cast. What's next? Well, how about the main core of the game, the combat? Spicy move! Now, I think that the overdose in the title more refers to the nature of the combat here, more so than it does the thinly veiled attempt at hiding Ernesto's death, and pretty early on here you're gonna see just how ludicrous and over the top the combat can really be. And look, I'll give credit where it's due, I can see why some people would like this game. It's kinda hard to not enjoy yourself when you're causing all out genocide on the streets of Mexico. It's a third person shooter, but no prizes for figuring that one out, which means you move with the keyboard and you aim and shoot with the mouse. There's no crouching or popping to cover, but you can jump and also shoot dodge in any direction. You've got a pretty standard roster of weapons here. There's pistols, revolvers, sawn off shotguns, shotguns, and then the modern assault rifle. Yeah, as opposed to the Victorian era assault rifle. I can't believe you've done this. There's no sniper rifle though, which I kind of guess is just their way of forcing the player to remain in the action, as opposed to hanging back and taking pot shots at everyone like a basic bitch. You gotta unlock the ability to dual wield some of these weapons too, which is really just done by playing the game and earning a certain amount of points. One thing the game doesn't tell you either is that you're better off pressing the fire button rapidly here with some of these weapons as opposed to holding it down. Now, I found this out after only like the second or so mission after realizing that my grandmother could probably fire a gun faster than Ramiro can, and she's been dead for almost 10 years now. Carry on. But it's important to mention, mostly because the game never really tells you this, and it really does double your firing rate with some of the weapons like the pistols and the shotguns. Total Overdose is also very clearly a shooter that's been designed with console plays in mind first and foremost. And the reason that I think that is because of that giant reticle that automatically locks onto an enemy whenever you're aiming in their general direction. And this might be fine, except trying to be accurate and aim for something specific like, I don't know, an enemy's head, just isn't really all that possible because of how the guns actually work. 
Honestly too, I don't think I've played a third person shooter where the weapons are so inaccurate. And you may as well be trying to kill someone with a goddamn water sprinkler because the bullets often seem to fire out in this wide cone shaped trajectory. Kinda reminds me of that scene in Pulp Fiction when the guy bursts out of the bathroom and then tries to shoot at Vincent and Jules but hits everything else but them. It even has this mechanic where you can get locked on headshots automatically. What you gotta do is hold down the right mouse button until this little crosshair snaps onto the enemy's head. Then you quickly press the fire button. Bullseye! And I think this is honestly harder than it would've just been to aim at someone's head and press the fire button. Playing something like this after coming off playing Max Payne feels like going from performing open heart surgery with a scalpel to trying to hit a square peg through a round hole with a plastic hammer. As a result, the shooting is really just about getting in nice and close, waiting for that lock on to register and then just unloading. And it really just does feel like a handicap given to people playing with a controller, which I mean, let's be honest, really lacks the accuracy and the quick response time that you get when aiming with a mouse. Would have been a pretty boring game though if that's all you did was shoot people over and over and it has done its best to keep things interesting. You've got that good old fashioned shoot dodge which Max Payne fans are going to find familiar. And you're going to be putting this thing to good use here, believe me. Total Overdose really could have also just been called shoot dodge the game. You can cartwheel off walls matrix style shooting enemies in midair which looks pretty damn cool. You can also do a backwards flip off a wall and also shoot dodge backwards to fire at enemies behind you, but they're really just kind of the same thing, aren't they? And it's just that it all seems so familiar and rehashed. The whole thing of jumping out of a speeding car and using it as an explosive battering ram as awesome as it is feels pretty similar to bailing out of cars in the GTA games. I'd like to say that that rewinding mechanic is unique. Now, this is one that when you're killed, you can inexplicably rewind time to a point before your demise, get a bit of a health boost, and then hopefully do something different to avoid the same fate. Gotcha, bitch. It's a good thing because it doesn't force you to stare at a game over screen and it keeps things moving along. But again though, kinda similar to what they pulled off with Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Though I do have to say though that I really did come to appreciate this near the end of the game when they start to throw the entire fucking Mexican army at you during combat. I mean it probably saved me a good couple of dozen restarts. It's not like it's all unoriginal though. I think it's kind of cool how you can do different melee attacks depending on the angle an enemy standing from you. I mean that's a neat touch. Hit them from the front for instance and Ramiro's just going to use his elbow. Hit him from the side though and he'll go for the classic nut shot and ensure that that guy in particular won't be continuing his family's bloodline. When the scores and the combo names are popping up on the screen, it really makes for some enjoyable mayhem. And it really does skate that thin line between being organized chaos and just a complete shit show. Jesus, who's whining now? To complement all of this are the loco moves. Now four of these they explain in a tutorial, but then the rest of them they kinda don't. Ah! So you're just kinda left sitting there looking at these icons and having to test them out in the field. The fuck is that? Golden gun's definitely the most basic. Now with this one you can pull out a golden gun and then one shot whatever you're aiming at. And I think everyone who ever played GoldenEye 64's multiplayer mode just shuddered from PTSD thinking about this. Then there's Tornado, which is definitely one of the more useful ones. Ramiro does a full 360 degree spin and shoots at all the enemies in the near vicinity, hopefully killing all of them. For some reason though, when you use this one, it shows these close-ups of everyone being killed, but along with close-ups of other random objects like nearby cars or even a chicken for some reason. Because I don't know, I guess fuck that one chicken in particular. Ah! These next two I think are creative, just not all that functional. One of these lets you spawn in an undead mariachi with a grenade launcher. And this would have been cool, but this idiot can't differentiate between you and the enemies. And he has no concept of what friendly fire is, so he's often more harm than good. The other one's a luchador who's kind of the same, except instead of a grenade launcher he's got a melee weapon. And the main similarity both of these guys seem to share is that they both seem to really hate women. So we've now gone into the realm of summoning misogynistic spirits to do our bidding. And yes, I know it's a bug, relax. My favorite though is El Toro, now this is hilarious. With this one, Ramiro does his best charging bull impersonation and just runs around head down ass up because that's the way he likes to fuck. Battering everything that gets in his way, and this one is just so dumb. I can't help but have a grin across my face the entire time I'm doing it. 
And to make it even more over the top, you're also completely immune to damage the entire time. A few times, I just used this thing for basic traversal. I mean, it beat trying to run around normally like an idiot. Not to mention, it was faster and safer than making myself this lightly jogging bullet magnet. Keeping the whole Mexican cliche thing going, one of the other ones is an explosive piñata, which is exactly what it sounds like. I'm surprised they didn't include weapons like Molotov chili bowls or something. You know what I mean? Like bowls of chili that you throw at enemies that could light them on fire. Or maybe like a sombrero that could decapitate someone like Kung Lao's hat in Mortal Kombat. Would have been awesome. I mean, look, we're already playing into all of the stereotypes here. I'm just saying it seems like wasted potential. Bing at the boom boom! Finally though, there's El Mariachi, the ultimate homage to Desperado, where you whip out two guitar cases that happen to be machine guns and lug them around, mowing everything down in front of you. And it almost makes the entire game worth playing alone. It's also a timely reminder that Desperado is a good film and you need to go and watch it right now, bitch. Not yet. To give you an idea of just how busted this one is, you're again completely invincible when you're in this mode. And if you can't see why that's as broken as it is, well, just think about it. <laughs> I think the only thing that annoys me about this one, along with the El Toro ability, is that you can't manually turn them off. You've got to wait for this counter to run down, which is kind of stupid if you've just killed everyone in the area. You've just got to sit there and wait the rest of the clock out like an idiot. I don't know, man. I guess the basic convenience of an on and off button for your abilities was just too hard to add in. Still, though, it is hard to admit that this is trashy, cheesy fun when it all comes together. So, yeah, what a good idea it was to have these horrible story missions where you've got to drive trucks around, which takes all the focus away from the shooting. This blew some shit up! Actually, kind of enjoyed the soundtrack a lot too, much more than I thought I would, and I had that main menu music stuck in my head for days after I stopped playing this. The whole thing's got that chunky, polygonal aesthetic from the mid-2000s that I really like. It uses a modified version of the RenderWare engine, and it comes from that time just before the next generation of consoles came out, where we got some really decent looking games which were just pushing that aging technology to its limits. I think though, probably one of the biggest problems with this game though is the ammo or the lack thereof. I mean, for a game where you're shooting enemies mindlessly almost the entire time, this thing is mega stingy on ammo, man. Even for the basic weapons like the pistols. You can fire those SMGs for about 4 seconds until they're completely bone dry, then you have to change out to something else. And it just kind of ruins the flow of the combat when you've got to stop what you're using and swap out to another weapon to simply be able to keep on firing. Now, it does become less of an issue the more you play the game though, because the more points you earn, you can start unlocking higher ammo capacities for all of these weapons, eventually unlocking infinite ammo so it's not even an issue. But these early missions, it's a real problem and it's really not doing the best job of winning you over. The whole thing's also a bit of a one-trick pony. And even though it really only lasts for about five or six hours, you're gonna have seen all there is to see and do here within that first two or three. This is very important. Believe me, please. Later in the game, as an attempt to make it more challenging, they do that good old-fashioned bullshit that it seemed almost every single game from back then did. They start to introduce enemies with goddamn rocket launchers. Seriously, I don't know what it was with video games from that time period. They always seem to have some kind of enemy with an RPG or something that would just hang back on a ledge somewhere and shoot at you incessantly. I think the definite highlight of the campaign is the mission where you crash in a pool party at a drug lord's estate. Hola, girls! And then gunning down bimbos in bikinis, and I mean, it's something that developers would just never get away with anymore. Okay, girls, show him your bazookas! Bruh. The final level takes place on a moving train, and anyone who knows me knows how much I love those kind of levels. The rest of it, though, is pretty unremarkable stuff. I don't know why I'm telling you this. And you're going to find it enjoyable just as long as the gunplay holds your attention, which is obviously something that's going to differ from person to person. In between the main story missions, of which I think there's only about 10 or so, you're able to roam the city streets, collecting bonus points and completing side missions. For some reason, the game forces you to finish at least one of these before you can progress onward. Why they've made you do this, I've got no idea. And the absolute godsend here are the taxis, which are almost always parked randomly at the end of most streets and can take you to any zone in the game for no cost. But still though, this aspect of the game is really just like a watered down bare bones Grand Theft Auto with a barren, lifeless open world that's completely lawless and just cut off from civilized society. I mean, there's cop cars, but not a cop in sight. You can just move through the street causing absolute mayhem without any real repercussions. I mean, what is this, Western Sydney? 
This place may as well be set in the Dark Ages, and though I've never seen Hell, I can't imagine it being much worse than this. Some of these side missions too are just boring as shit. Like driving through checkpoints in a so-called racing mission. I guess that coding AI to drive the other cars was just too much of a hassle, so they just went with this instead. And they don't even put you in a car for the beginning of these either. You have to start on foot and then run to a nearby vehicle to get started, so yeah, thanks for that. A lot of these side missions also just involve running around and then killing a bunch of gang members. And then for some reason, a few of them involve moving stuff around in a forklift. Yeah, because that's exactly what I want to be doing in my Mexican gun fu shooter, isn't it? Picking up boxes and crates and moving them around in a goddamn forklift. Though, maybe this is the game's way of training you without you even knowing it. Because for one of the last missions, you've got to get a bomb onto a train, also within a time limit while enemies are shooting at you. Okay, amigo. But I can't stress how much this open world aspect is just like a crappier version of Grand Theft Auto. You've even got rampages, which are again activated by skull icons. There's jumps you can drive over to collect points, where it even goes into slow motion, identical to the unique jumps in the GTA series. And that's really kind of the main problem with the game, harking back to what I touched on before. If you've ever played anything the game has taken influence from, namely Grand Theft Auto and Max Payne, well, then you're also going to notice how those games just do most of it so much better. Something as simple as the minimap not showing the actual layout of the streets, so you never know if you're heading down a dead end or something. I mean, this was 2005 when this thing came out, was it so hard to include something so basic? That open world and driving aspect was obviously done way better in the Grand Theft Auto games, and they came out prior to this even with Vice City and Grand Theft Auto 3. Max Payne 2 came out back in 2003, two years prior to this, and honestly, that just shits all over the shooting in Total Overdose. Though, that is a little bit of an unfair comparison. I mean, Max Payne 2 still shits over most modern shooters as well, including Max Payne 3. Yeah, I said it. Okay, take it easy. One thing I will say about this game, though, is that the PC port is pretty damn good, surprisingly. It didn't crash the entire time I spent with it, and it also ran really well. I didn't get any frame rate dips or stuttering, which might not sound like a big deal, but you'd be surprised at how touch and go some of these older games can be. I did see a couple of glitches, and there's definitely something going on here with the audio mixing, making some sounds near impossible to hear, but I mean, overall, nothing major. The wildest thing is that they even made a sequel to this thing called Chili Con Carnage. Yeah, wow, guys, you're really getting your mileage out of the whole Mexican thing, hey but it only ever got released on the PSP. And as far as I can remember, my PSP is still being used as a doorstop somewhere. Overall, I don't think Total Overdose is all that amazing or memorable, and I think that by the time I've uploaded this to YouTube, I'll probably forget I'd even played it. But it did amuse me for the short time I spent with it, if only because of that image of a summoned luchador battering a prostitute with a metal pipe, when I got to gun down American flag bikini-clad bimbos with machine guns. All right, you know what? Maybe I might remember it a little bit longer then. Muy padrísimo.